La première façon d'aborder les the first way to talk about interdisciplinarity and climate studies is to do a retrospective study on the science of climate. Now, back to the origins, there were the observations made by uh, people who specialize in at the atmosphere in Hawaii, and they observed that the CO2 increases regardless of emissions anyway. Now, once this observation has been made, obviously the natural counterpart in the field of physics are radiative balances. Atmosphere, physics, those two fields are quite close. Once we find that the radiative balance can be changed according to the atmosphere observations, then we understand that many different fields will be changed. Physics, chemistry, geology, statistics, biology. So everything we observe is part of a natural or artificial variability of climate. This is the first interdiscipline mode. Human sciences are not yet involved, but here the interdisciplinarity will allow biology to enrich physics and physics to enrich geology, etc., so that we can understand the climate in the past. At the same time, we understand that if the climate is changing, then we must expect impact of different dimensions. This means we're going to introduce more remote disciplines, such as uh, economics, uh, political sciences, economics, because we're going to try and quantify the impact or the benefits of climate changes, and political sciences, because it is now necessary to coordinate between countries on the international level to understand what can be done and what must be done and how we can do it. But the negotiations most of the time were unsuccessful, and unfortunately we now know that there is inertia involved here and that we're going to have to adjust. And in order to adjust, we call in new fields, such as social sciences, human sciences, for instance, human sciences, in order to come up with scenarios and then tell other people what the scenarios are going to be. We discover a problem and progressively this leads to the contraction of a practice where all disciplines are involved. But what does it mean that all disciplines are involved? What is a discipline, first of all? Just to summarize, a discipline is a way to control the discourse. I'll explain. Science produces words, and words are used together one after the other to make sentences, and the sentences are brought together to form a speech or a discourse. Now, the discipline will place borders to limit the discourse. A discourse on physics will be contained within borders, and the same goes for other fields. Chemistry, for instance, the uh, chemistry discourse will remain within the boundaries of uh, chemistry. Now, the discourse can be controlled in several ways on the production. How do we make production so that it can be called, uh, how do we produce physics, sorry, so that it can be called physics? How do we make economy so it can be called economy? And uh, we also finally understand that there is regulation at play. How do we organize production? Who authorizes someone else to be a chemist? A company department, a group of uh, colleagues, a council. So there are ways to regulate the uh, discourse of a given discipline and who is allowed to engage in that discipline. Something else. The discipline as a control principle implements the control by using regulation methods uh, in places where knowledge can be accumulated and redistributed for instance, in universities or during uh, disciplinary reviews, um, specialized publication where data is uh, contained and redistributed. Interdisciplinarity, therefore, is where scientific production, sciences are produced and the control system is threatened. Interdisciplinarity requires a distinction, which I'm showing on this uh, slide. The distinction between different modalities whereby multidisciplinarity is implemented. Pluridisciplinarity is when we simply 
have different people in different fields talking about different things. In a university, typically, there are many different scientists talking about different things, but they don't talk to each other. Multidisciplinarity is where people from different disciplines or fields work on the same subject, subject but don't necessarily talk to each other. And interdisciplinarity is where people will talk to each other. One discipline will use the methods coming from a different discipline or the knowledge coming from a different discipline. This is exactly what we're discussing right now. Interdisciplinarity is a sub-modality in the various practices. And we end with transdisciplinarity, a scientific production where the the uh, boundaries, the control systems and the regulation fade away and become almost invisible. So interdisciplinarity means we can move from one to another. It doesn't really matter once we understand what we're talking about. One example, very quickly, paleoclimatology. It's about the reconstructing climates of the past, and this requires contribution from physics, chemistry, isotopic geochemistry, for instance, to try and understand proxies that tell you what the climate was in the past, biology, because some of these proxies which provide data for isotopic geochemistry will need biology to be understood, and history, because observations made by uh, researchers in the field of uh, nature or Earth will be calibrated uh, on the time scale of history. This is the first example of interdisciplinarity. The second example is the one used by the GIS, Climate, Environment and Society in France. The idea is to use various disciplines and dynamics on climate issues and uh, some uh, think tanks have been organized. Now, a last example, here we're talking about transdisciplinarity, a recent project from the Belgium, Belmont uh, Forum. It's called Artistic for Adaptation Research, a transnational transdisciplinary community and policy centered approach. The boundaries between disciplines fade away because artists and researchers, scientists, make themselves available for several communities in order to answer their questions and help them think about the past, the present, and the future without limiting themselves with the boundaries uh, in within the boundaries uh, of disciplines in conclusion i believe it is important to share among ourselves the best way to implement multidisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity one key is provided called reflexivity reflexivity is a process whereby we take distance from our practices in order to question their exhaustivity and in order to ask ourselves questions on what we could gain from a different discipline. Here we have uh, a system where the uh, researcher analyzes all the filters uh, connected with his own uh, traditional knowledge, and that would be benign reflexivity, but also reflexivity can implement iteration, submitting the results uh, to society, and a reflexivity is therefore a strong reflexivity here with strong interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity whereby during the scientific practice, during the research, the climate research practice, the mitigation and adjustment research, there are exchanges between the scientific community and the non-scientific community so that we can uh, question and reorganize the control principles which in this case can be useful.